Good morning and welcome to this, the 90th virtual bridge session. And I'm pleased to say we're bridging out a bit further today. Um, we've got our colleagues from Wales today coming in. And with that, I'll hand over to our head of JISC Wales, Alison Nicholson, to introduce the speakers in for this morning. Many thanks, Jason. Yes, this morning, we're delighted to be joining the, uh, the virtual bridge uh, session. Uh, I've caught up with a few and obviously seen a few sort of uh, recordings as well. So as you said, really good, good resources, lots of interesting topics and really excited that, uh, that Wales has actually managed to join this one officially as well uh, this time around. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, colleagues and, um, and friends really from the sector. Richard Fulila from Colleague Camoyth. And soon to join us will be Hannah Mathias uh, from Cardiff and Vale College. Uh, both Richard and Hannah, I would sort of say, are probably leading lights. So no pressure now when they come to sort of talk, but certainly leading lights when it comes to supporting staff development and not just the skills, but building confidence and creativity uh, and just developing people um, to, to support their learners. So at that point, Richard, I don't know whether you want to give us a Give us an overview of, of what the world is like for you at Colleague of Camoythan and what you're, what you're up to there with your staff. Great, thanks Alison. Um, okay, so going back to, I think it was about 2018, uh, Welsh Government obviously invested a lot in terms of developing a national strategy for post-16 education in Wales with the Digital 2030 uh, standards. So we were very pleased to be uh, working part of that collaboration with other colleges in Wales um, guided by JISC. And that really formulated, I suppose, those, those set of national standards that looked at everything in terms of the transformation of an organisation. So it wasn't just about teaching and learning, it was about leadership, it was about management, infrastructure, it was that whole picture in essence. So having actively been a part of that, I thought it was essential then for our organisation to look at a framework for our own digital capability. Now, I'm not going to admit to how long I've been part of, of ILT back in the days of ILT champions um, in Wales, but it isn't something that we'd previously looked at beyond teaching and learning. So everything was focused on blended learning, hybrid learning, and obviously uh, with the current pandemic and crisis that became a focus for us. But when we thought of digital capability, we saw it as that whole institutional um, approach. And I think that went back to, again, 2018, um, when we looked at using the insight surveys from JISC, we looked at uh, learner data, we looked at staff data, over three to four years, where could we improve, what could we look at? So that really led to me locking myself away um, for many weeks in my office and using many post-it notes uh, to come up with a, a structure from those standards that we thought if staff went through a program of, of training, um, of self-discovery that we could meet those standards, but in our context. And I think that was essential as well to identify what was a digitally capable member of Colleague Camoid staff, not just sector staff. So we wanted to hit all of those key points of the standards, but it also had to be beneficial for our institution and for our learners. So um, what we came up with from there was this concept of and I won't be, I'll, I'll admit it, I'm not the first to have done this and having spent many years back and forth to DigiFest and, and working with others in the sector, um, we came up with a initial six day digital advocacy program linked to the framework. So we have an introduction, um, which is like a face to face day. We get cohorts of staff together. We go through what the framework is. We go through a rationale, what their journey will be with us. And then we look at self-directed learning because well, as we do with learners these days it's nice to say well go off and learn something and then come back but what did that mean and and how that transforms into a learning culture for staff because we're all learning professionals um, but I think sometimes um, particularly with qualification staff seemingly get into that 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 rut of well I don't need to learn anymore so because I'm delivering the program without having that broader view so that's key to us. So that's self-directed. We then have a whole day around well-being. So in terms of their well-being, well-being of others, and, and that seems to have hit the note really in terms of the current um, crisis, um, not just for, for learners, but for staff in terms of their working practices and how you know it's, it's quite easy, isn't it? Um, when you're working on the dining room table, teaching all day to roll that over into admin and pass dinner and 
and, and that they need those breaks um, as well. So we, we look very proactively um, at that, that well-being. Um, then we provide them with information about our own systems and services, because I suppose there's nothing worse than working in an institution where systems are continually rolled out and no one's ever trained or explained what they do or their role um, that they play within them. Um, so that, that's key for us. And at the end of the programme, then they generate a case study for us. They get up and present in front of their little cohort. Because again, having spent many years doing this, training staff, running workshops, staff are very comfortable with teaching and, and teaching in front of their students, but to then actually get in front of their peers, share their ideas. So one of the key focuses of the whole program is about building that confidence to share, to collaborate, to be open to learning new things um, and different practices and sharing those, those with others. So that's been a, a fundamental key focus for us. And that's underpinned by um, what I've called our digital transformational skills. So five key things, um, very similar to the CHISC framework, very similar to the uh, European Union uh, digital framework for staff in that we've got four levels um, pinned against those five transferable skills around communication, creativity, uh, literacy in terms of analyzing data, uh, well-being, and um, that, that lifelong learning um, ethos as well. So they look at themselves in terms of being um, beginners, so they can use the systems, explorers in terms of their, their sort of widening practice, adopters that is meaningful, and then leadership in terms of then sharing that practice, working with others. So we've got some cohorts in transition at the moment, um, some who are starting their first day next week, some who had their last day yesterday, and then they will move into a, a much broader um, cross college community. Because again, we haven't just focused on teaching staff. I've got since some principals, heads of schools, business support managers. We have really opened that program up to everyone and encouraged them all to communicate and, and collaborate. So in a nutshell, um, that's, that's sort of what we've, we've devised as our um, digital advocacy journey linked to a framework in a proactive response to the, the digital standards um, within Wales from Welsh Government. What's the, um, what's the buy-in like and, and the enthusiasm from staff? Because I mean, as you, as you mentioned just then, sometimes staff can be a little bit nervous about embarking on a journey that maybe it's, they're less comfortable with. Well, Generally enthusiastic or, uh, um, or, are they, or are they giving you grey hairs? <laughs> no, no, um, I'm, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. We knew there were key uh, sticking points within the program. We were going to ask staff you know, to get out of their comfort zone, to try something new, to, to, to learn um, again. And I'm pretty sure across most organizations, if we tweet something, we always like to tweet something that's positive. But what's come out of from staff themselves is a real enthusiasm for the program. And they've really shared their experiences with others. So I think at the moment I've got a, Got about 120 staff going through the programme now with a waiting list of, right. of other staff who are also keen um, mm -hmm. to participate. So fortunately, what you, what you may have seen on Twitter is, is genuine, and that, that's the genuine, um, really positive uh, response from staff at the moment. I, and I hope that continues. Uh, that's our goal anyway. Yes, as you said, building that community and that expertise and enthusiasm is, is key, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hannah, welcome. Um, Hannah Matthias is the uh, e-learning manager at Cardiff and Vale College, not that far away from from Colliga Camoy, just down these at the A470 or whatever, um, you know, a few miles that way. Um, Hannah, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what you've been getting up to at Cardiff and Vale. Um, specifically in terms of digital capability, um, yeah, so we kind of started um, similar to what uh, Richard's been doing really, but we started it um, a while ago because uh, what I was finding is staff were getting confused in terms of where they need to go for training, how they get training, what um, role specific things as well. So uh, what I put together were tell journeys, so technology enhanced learning journeys for uh, we have one for teaching staff, we have one for business support and one for leaders. So similar to what Richard was saying, that it's kind of, um, it's not just teaching and learning, it's about 
digital capability in whatever role that you have within an education organization because everyone is part of that organization and needs to uh, improve their digital capability so um, we started using the GIST discovery tool a number of years ago. So that was obviously the key starting point for our tell journey to evaluate where you are in terms of your digital capability. It gives you a nice profile with links to resources. So staff kind of know where they are and know where they need to improve after they've done that. So the first part of the journey, I've done it in like an infographic. because uh, That's another thing. Um, engagement from staff in terms of sending out policies and procedures. Um, they just don't read documents anymore. People just want them in a nice, easy, digestible format. So I've decided to go down the route of using infographics and video instead now. Um, so yeah, they've got a, a nice infographic. It's a little roadmap, basically. So they start off with the first part, which is their Explorer badge. They get a Tell Explorer badge. And then the second part is a pioneer badge. Um, so it's not linked to the digital standards because that we did this before the standards came out. Um, so that's the next part of our, that we'll have to do that bit soon. Um, so they start off by um, doing some uh, Microsoft Educator um, Center courses because we're at Microsoft College where we very much promote everything that they have on their Microsoft Educator Center um, site. There's lots of different courses on there that's pedagogically focused and they get uh, little badges for uh, completing these courses too. And it saves us having to write all the content all the time. They can um, be a lot more self-led in their CPD development. So that's what we're trying to encourage staff to be more, have an ownership over their staff, own, own staff development. That They're not waiting for inset days or for workshops that we're putting on, that they do it as and when they can and dip into it. So the, the educator site is really nice because it'll save where you've got to. You don't have to complete a whole course. It'll save where you've got to. So they start off with doing something like um, to get their Microsoft Innovative Educator badge. They just have to get a thousand points. So that might be um, two small courses, whether that's on Teams or one note, like an introductory thing. Then they, uh, then they have to review their Moodle pages. Some staff are still using Moodle. So we're kind of in that transition between I use in Moodle or Teams, and um, we'll look at your Moodle or your Teams site or both. Um, and are you of, um, is it of a certain standard? So we have Moodle star rating um, that we kind of use. So if they meet like a two star rating, they have to, um, we look at their course and see if they meet those that standard. And then they have to do a um, Microsoft certified um, exam in office of their choice. So once they've done those three things, they submit all their evidence and then we can give them an Explorer badge. Then they can move on to the uh, Pioneer badge. So the Pioneer badge is um, slightly more advanced. So they have to do, they have to get a three star Moodle rating or a Teams rating on their site. Um, they have to get their Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert badge. It's a bit of a mouthful, M-I-E. Um, which they have to submit an application to Microsoft and they review their, their application each year. And then they also have to do a um, share how um, they've helped someone else in, in their technology enhanced learning journey as well. So we're trying to get staff helping others um, too. So once they submit that evidence, they can get that Pioneer badge. And then the top badge is the um, Microsoft Certified Educator badge. Um, is we we can we're like at a testing center, so we can um, do the office exams and the certified educator exams. So that's the end goal for educators is to get the certified educator um, badge. And each role is different for um, a business support staff. Will be more focused on uh, using office and, and collaborative tools and things like that within three six five and Teams. Leadership uses the um, Microsoft Educator Center. Um, courses on uh, digital leadership. So there's slightly different routes for um, different uh, roles. So part of that now we've um, embedded that process into appraisals. So staff have um, being asked during that appraisal process to what stage they're at in their, their tell journey. So it gets embedded into our quality processes in the college 
uh, which has been really helpful and really useful. The other thing to support the tell journeys, we have digital um, leaders in each department that support our staff to make their way through their journeys. Um, so they're better placed within each department and they know everybody. So they've got that relationship um, that my team might not necessarily have with everybody. So they, they help push the tell journeys within their areas. Mm -hmm. So that, that there's a, a kind of where we're at with tell journeys. There's lots of other things that we've been doing as well. Um, so we did a big um, ed fest, an online um, CPD event in June and July. It was like a two week long event where we've been getting staff to engage with um, workshops. There might be live ones, they may be um, uh, not live, asynchronous and synchronous sessions. Um, and part of that, we also embedded uh, the use of incentives. So we gave them codes for engaging with different sessions. And I used um, a Power App a template. So they put in their code for each session that they um, attended and it goes into a leaderboard. And then the people with the highest points win prizes. So um, they were, I think we did Amazon vouchers. I don't know what we're doing. We're doing it again in December because it was just ridiculously successful. Um, we actually had more people attend and face-to-face -face, um, CPD. So the engagement has been much better and people have been able to attend more sessions because they can go to recordings and watch things that maybe they wouldn't be able to do in a face-to-face -face session. So we're continuing with that um, kind of format for the time being. Um, what else have we been doing? Um, yeah, so it, we've got some PDF projects going at the moment. So um, we are currently mapping the digital standards to the Microsoft Educated Community site. Because we use that a lot, um, we're, we're kind of identifying where, where these different courses map to uh, the skills that they need to develop. So that'll be an interesting um, project. Uh, that's ongoing and um, yeah it's uh, we're also working on a lot of blended learning um, training as everybody is <laughs> so uh, yeah we started off with doing that just before we went uh, into lockdown in March we've continued that through doing um, remote workshops throughout the time we've been off um, to support that as well we've uh, we set up a team site um, so that my team were always available every morning initially um, just to help support staff. And then um, we've kind of also alongside that in that team site have been posting up useful resources, useful tips, running workshops through that team. Staff are now um, using it more of a community and social space. So if anyone's having any problems, lot staff are starting to answer each other's issues now, which is really nice to see. So they're getting confident to ask the questions now within that social space. Whereas before they were a bit reluctant, they were more kind of passively receiving that information. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it's kind of, it's, there's a, become a, a bit of a community of practice, I suppose, within that, um, that team space. So. Now, now, because that's happened, we're now pushing everything through that space. Uh, and it's nice to have that feedback from staff. So I can ask questions and do surveys regularly through that medium too, to see how things are going. Mm. So we can make changes to anything that we're doing as, as we're kind of progressing through different projects or different strategies. So whereas before everything was going through our intranet and that's, not very engaging for staff. How many of you access your internet, intranet for information? <laughs> probably not that regularly. You do. <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. on, a, on a needs basis, I think. Yeah, it? it's not kind of um, dry. Yeah, it is very much kind of go there for anything you need. Maybe like a um, an expenses claim form or <laughs> things like that. It's not it's not that fun, is it? So yeah, we're trying to get. Cool. Um, <laughs> We're trying to get staff talking to each other uh, and Teams really kind of helps out whether you're using Google or Teams, it's the same kind of process. So yeah, it's really important to drive change that people have the opportunity to ask you questions or give you feedback. So it seems to be working in that sense. 
think um, that's something that's really come across from, from both of you really is that sense of community and support um and, and going um jason asked earlier on you know sort of do, have you had any challenges i suppose with those who wish to be less engaged or is it this just sort of snowball so a little question for both of you yeah maybe, uh... <laughs> yeah it's not easy it's really hard um mm. and it's been really hard since march even more hard i think because the amount of pressure and workload that's fallen onto my team has been um incredible but everyone's really risen to it um and i think people forget that all the all learning technologists is not born with this stuff in their head everyone has to learn this as well um so <laughs> we're trying to stay ahead of the game and lots of these things and pedagogies are coming up that we've never had to deal with before and they're coming up with problems that we've never had we've never seen so every everyone is kind of making we're having to be really agile which education has never really had to be so um which is it's a really good thing to happen i think so everyone's developing those skills and are starting to make changes incrementally whereas before they would have waited to the end of term or the end of the year so i think in a sense it's helped in that in that regard mm -hmm. but yeah it's not been easy <laughs> <laughs> No, but right. it has it has got some people on board who were very reluctant before and i've been surprised that they have started using it and, and have really grasped it and are actually enjoying it now well definitely i think that that catalyst from engagement in march we went from 2020 to 2030 in about six months yeah and and that, as you say that that's been a massive challenge for staff and i spent probably like yourself on many an hour um, working from home, just supporting staff online and, and answering yeah. their questions and, and trying to get them to build um, and collaborate. But what, one thing that's been uh, sort of key for us is when staff realise that they have their own digital skills, they lead, lead digital lives. Um, yeah. so the, the, the switch that we've tried to flick for them is to say, well, you can, you can take that across into your working practices. You know, and, and again, you know, don't thank the current crisis for anything, but um, I think in terms of how they've socialised, how they've continued to meet with friends and family, that realisation that they can carry that over into their the teaching practices. Um, I think one of the key issues for me has been trying to get them out of this box as well. You know, the reaction to teaching online was suddenly it had to be sharing an interactive whiteboard, running my PowerPoints, talking for 45 minutes on screen. But the realization that you know I could quite easily write on the flip chart and I could still teach in the way that I was comfortable teaching, albeit through a different medium. And that, that's what a lot of staff have, have realized recently and what we're trying to encourage others to do as well. How how do you surface that sort of best practice? How do you how do you find those nuggets to, to share? Um, for us, that's going that is going to be an outcome of our, that is the outcome of our advocacy program because they all have to write a case study then go on to lead um, and work with others. Mm -hmm. But um, recently, quality weeks and quality boards, so through face-to-face you know, -face observations in classrooms where it's been safe or online, identifying those staff who are trying new things, who are having success, um, and then we'll get them to, or we'll assist some of them to, to record that and share that practice with others. A similar thing with us, we've been doing um, online observations and learner walks. Um, I use our staff digital leaders to identify people that have, have been doing some great stuff. Twitter, people have been sharing things what they're doing on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, I've recently been doing, started a podcast with each department to share what they've been doing. So I'll get the digital leader to identify one or two members of staff that they know have been doing some interesting things. So um, yeah, that's been really good from my perspective because then I get an insight because it's really, I don't know what it's like for you, Rich but it's really hard to know what's going on in, in these online sessions because you can't just jump in. Yeah, not, um, not part of that. And, and, and recently, um, I've been fortunate enough from going from a team of two now to a team of, of seven um, in, the, in the last few weeks, finally. But having digital um, capability staff or, or staff who are working with me part-time, but they're also still teaching, because they're across different departments now, I'm getting... Mm -hmm conversations with them and finding out more about what's happening on the ground, what they are working with colleagues on um, and, and how teaching and learning has developed. 
I'm sure for others as well um, today, what I, what I found as a really good promotion for the staff was the fact that our senior leadership started using things like Teams Live for SLT updates in terms of the current crisis, how we were reacting, live Q&As with staff. So to see the principal, the assistant principals, the vice principals answering questions live, again, modeled behavior. I thought, well, if they, you know, mm. they do it really well, then they wanted to try that. So that, that's been a, a good sort of catalyst to getting those reluctant staff to engage as well, seeing others do it and seeing how others from every level in the organization doing as well, not just saying you will do it, but, you know, leading on that practice as well. That was good. Yeah, well, just leading by example is an important note. Um, we've come to about half an hour, so um, if you don't mind, we'll bring the recording to an end. Can I give my thanks to Alison, Richard and Hannah for giving us the view from Wales on the very important subject as to how we uh, support our staff going forward in this, uh, this age and, uh, and building upon that. So thank you very much um, and hopefully we'll see Wales again in future. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.